Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity for Dong to uh, give a presentation and some views on the in the given and outsider's perspective or an investor's perspective. First of all, also, of course, uh, I would like to pass on regrets from my boss, Kurt Bligor, who was supposed to have been here. Uh, but I'll be very happy to be my master's voice today. And I also hope that I will fulfill the very most important rule when doing presentation doing presentations, uh, especially at this time of the day, I will try to be quick. That is, it is my job to speak, it is your job to listen, and it is my job to finish my job before you finish yours. I hope we will succeed in that. So, let's get started. Dung Energy, when we put it ourselves, then uh, we're one of the leading energy companies, energy groups in Northern Europe. We're working across the whole value chain, uh, oil and gas production, uh, S&D. But for the in a given the perspective, uh, the three things that I would like to highlight, that is we're global leader in offshore wind, as was just said. Uh, we have currently more than 1,000 megawatts in operation, and within a year or so, we'll have another 1,000 uh, megawatts in, in operation that are under construction currently. <laughs> then we are building a fleet of modern CCGT plants. And uh, then we have addressed a little bit, I won't go into it very much, but we think it's very important also to look at energy efficiency. And for that, we are trying now to work on building climate partnerships with the German Stadtwerke. It's something we've been doing for many, many years in Denmark with uh, big companies like Novo Nordisk and Carlsberg and, and other well-known companies. And that has resulted in huge uh, energy savings. That might be a paradox for a company, but we think that's also important to work on that, of course. And then uh, if we look at what we have accomplished or are accomplishing in for example, the wind, uh, the, the wind part. I would also like to mention some of our German partners. Siemens has been instrumental, for example, in delivering fantastic wind tur 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 turbines at uh, very competitive prices. So that's part of the reason we have been able to be very successful in the in the offshore wind industry. And then I should probably also say that we are a state-owned company. Uh, the Danish state they hold around 80% uh, of uh, of our stock. This is our climate challenge. We have talked a lot about that today. On a PowerPoint screen, that is very, very easy to fix. <laughs> this is the shared vision for the Energiewende and for Dong Energy. Uh, we think the Energiewende is very, very interesting. I was about to say experiment. I think we can call it that. Uh, we have talked about today how difficult it is. Uh, but the direction, there's no doubt about the direction. And that's the vision that we also share in Dong. Uh, we think it's very important to continue. It was, of course, very easy to agree on this five, seven, eight, ten years ago before the financial crisis hit us. But today, also Altmaier has talked a lot about, in a way, you could say the new framework. So what is it? What is the framework that we operate in today? From our perspective, there are two things that is extremely important. We see the public and the political demand. Uh, the reality is that uh, we need a green transition. We need green uh, energy production, but we are also more and more constrained by the economic situation. So the demand for us as an energy company is to deliver green and affordable energy. And this is the task that we have set ourselves So how do you do that in Dong? As I said, our vision is to produce clean and reliable energy. And as a company, we also need to do it while being profitable. About six years ago, Dong made, I think we could call it a very ambitious strategy. Uh, we had at that time 15% renewable uh, power production and 85% fossil power production, uh, most mostly in coal. And then uh, Dong decided that Within three decades, uh, we would shift that uh, around to go into 85% renewables and 15% fossil production. And also, and that's one of the issues we also would like to address in the, in the given, the, as you can see, the way to that is that we decided a couple of years ago to phase out of coal and instead shift from switch coal uh, to gas, which is much cleaner. And we hope to end up in 2040 with 85% renewable production 
and uh, to have as backup fuel, which is of course very important since it's not only biomass, it's intermittent, then we need a backup fuel. And uh, our strategy is that that should be gas. Uh, briefly, what we work on in, uh, is, of course, you can see wind. We also have biomass. Uh, part of the challenge right now is we are working to uh, convert some of our uh, coal-fired power plants into biomass within the next couple of years. That's a big challenge, too. And then we have a small target. I don't know if you can read the text, but uh, part of this challenge is that we need to uh, cut down very much on the on the emission, uh, CO2 emission per kilowatt hour. And uh, it is difficult, but so far we are very proud to say that we are even below, or above target, but below, uh, below, below the amount of emission that we, are, uh, that we should have reached at this point. So it's going the, di the right direction, but of course it will also be very difficult uh, with the financial situation to do this. That takes cooperation between the industry and politicians. There are two things that, uh, as I said, we are in Dong uh, looking at and where we think we have the expertise uh, and where we think it's, uh, we would have something to add to the energy vendor and uh, would like to engage in that. Um, the renewable ambition is one thing, as we have heard earlier. Then, or oh, I think we can say Dong, uh, Germany is a pioneer also in this regard, maybe together with the Nordic countries, but Germany is very ambitious. It will be tough. We know it also from today with the discussion on the cost of this, but we think that it is possible if we all work together. From the industry, industry side, we know that we need to lower the cost of energy. In Dong, it's the offshore part that we in particular have focused on. It's very expensive now. We also think it has a fantastic potential. And we work very hard to lower the cost of, uh, of offshore wind farms. Uh, and we're sure that it will be possible also to do it. Um, it will take subsidies for some while still, probably still many years. Uh, but we're working very hard to cut down on the cost on, uh, on this. Then the second part is infrastructure. Also very important, we've heard about that today. If we are going to give consumers the, the uh, how to say, if they to get something from all the money they invest in, in renewables, uh, then we also need a very good infrastructure to be able to get it, the offshore wind from the North Sea to the South, and of course some of the solar when the sun is shining from the South of Germany to the North. Uh, so the infrastructure is extremely important if we want to have efficient uh, energy market. And then as, as an investor, uh, one of the former speakers today said that the stable investment framework is probably very, very difficult to get. And that might be true. But still, of course, as an investor, it's important to have a somewhat stable and predictable investment framework. There are limits to the risk that it's possible to take, even though we are very green and committed and would like, like to deliver green and, uh, and reliable energy, then of course the investment uh, conditions, the investment framework needs to be somewhat uh, realistic. On the renewable side, Germany is, as we said, a pioneer and uh, we will work to cut the cost uh, together with uh, our partners. On what we think should be the perfect complement for renewables, the gas-fired power plants, we are looking a little more skeptical on the investment uh, environment, like we know a lot of others are also doing. We've had a, one of the former speakers also mentioned coal. What is happening today is coal. I don't know if it's king, but it's getting back on the stage, probably. Uh, in our view, gas-fired power production has several advantages. You can see them up there, fast to build. It's a, a fossil fuel, but it's a very clean fossil fuel. It emits about half of what a modern coal-fired power plant emits. And then if we look at the ambitions, then what we find a paradox, you could say, is that on, on, the, on the chart you can see uh, the, the, the profitability of uh, coal-fired production. And that has increased very much, uh, partly, of course, because the ETS is not working and partly because the prices of coal 
have, if not collapsed, then gone down significantly, uh, partly also due to the developments in the US that we have talked about before. What is a big paradox is if the energy vendor is so ambitious in renewables, put so much money into renewables, and then we continue to emit so much CO2 with coal-fired power plants. Then we pay a lot of money without getting what it's all about, that is a low-carbon society. In our view, that's a, that's a paradox, and we think that's necessary to address, and we think it's, uh, it's interesting. Of course, one of the, the, the name of the game, I guess now, is the ETS. We have talked a little bit about it too. Uh, if you put it in a in a uh, how do you say in a friendly way, you can say it's uh, it's critical. If you look at it very pessimistic, you can say I guess it's all, almost collapsed. We heard our Finnish colleague that they would not like to do anything in this period to repair, but we think that if uh, that that is necessary, if we want to move towards a low carbon society, if we want to have investments that doesn't make any lock in on uh, on the uh, very long perspective, then uh, we need to address the ETS system, if not immediately. No panic, but no complacency. Uh, we need to address that now. And even if we address the ETS, I think it's probably unlikely that that would be able to make all the difference. It's probably, right now, the switching price, the, 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 the ETS price should be around 50, 55 to, to, to ensure a, a fuel switch from coal to gas. And that's probably not realistic anywhere near in the, in the future. So we probably also need to discuss other options as well if we want to make this switch from coal to gas and ensure that we get a business case for what we see as a perfect complement for renewables. So, in conclusion, how do we move the energy vendor forward? In a very simplified manner, if you look at this chart, I know it will be a lot more complicated than this. Infrastructure part is extremely important and will make the foundation for a successful energy vendor. And then we think that uh, the, the right combination and what should be the both affordable and green energy solution should be to continue to invest heavily in renewables. We've put a wind farm, but it's renewables, and then combine it with gas, and that's not a coal-fired power plant, that's a gas-fired power plant, to combine that with uh, gas-fired uh, power as a backup fuel. Thank you very much. <laughs>